Ginger. Ginger. The bed's not been slept in either. <laughs> from your friendly listening bank. Mm. I'll give you six to four. It's a message to say they're increasing the charges so they can get a new hearing aid. <laughs> oh, well, fire. Don't tell me we're not out of the wood yet. Out of the wood? We've barely reached Grandma's cottage. <laughs> the wolf's trying on a nighty for size as well. You know the trouble, the reason for all this, don't you? Listen to that, Bob. I don't hear a thing. Exactly. <laughs> that lot follow the Green Cross code. Look right, look left, look right. If you can't see the gaffer come in, then put your feet up. Look, Charlie's back from his honeymoon now, so that should make a difference. Charlie? He's not the man he was, is he? I mean, even, even before the wedding, he was wandering about like a broken toilet lock, engaged and vacant at the same time. <laughs> I, I sometimes wonder if any of them are worth a damn trouble. Look, don't you think perhaps the fault might lie with you first? I mean, they rarely fall out amongst themselves. Yeah, you've got a point then. In fact, you might have put your finger on the fly in the ointment. They're too damn close. <laughs> what we need on that shop floor is some real solid hatred. Are you up to your tricks again? You can't beat them, cheat them. <laughs> if I can get them at one another's throats, they won't have anything else to do except get on with some work. You've got it all sorted out, haven't you? Yeah, except for one small detail. And what's that? I've got the vaguest idea how the hell I'm going to pull it off. <laughs> said, when all seems lost, things can only get worse. Well, while you're gone, I'll make you a cup of tea. Things just got worse. <laughs> hey, if you tell me, excuse me, what the old time you call this? Well, my little hand fell off, but <laughs> I make it ten past something. Yeah. Well, I think you're slow because I make it nearly next week. <laughs> you mean I'm late for work? Well, for padlocking the pyramids, no, but for unlatching your lady, yes, all right, come on. Let's hear your excuse. I had a bit of a row with Mary. Oh, I see. You've got maximatosis of the marriage bells already, have you? Oh, no, Gaffer. She's a good wife. She brings me a cup of tea in bed every morning as soon as I put the kettle on and put a tea bag in the pot. <laughs> Charlie, never have your ears pierced, lad. Your brains have run out through the holes. <laughs> it's a cooking. Cooking? What? Do you mean it's not like Mother used to make? Oh, but it is. And I get indigestion like my dad used to get. <laughs> I, uh, I thought you were uh, I thought you were a bit nifty with the nosh up yourself. I mean, don't the lads refer to you as Lord of the Hot Rings? Oh yes. I got my cookery badge in the Scouts. Well, there you are then. Why don't you dish up a dollop of hard board arcade and chips? That's just it, Mary won't let me. She said it's not manly to wear an apron, so she does it. Honestly, Gaffer, it's awful. If I don't say I like it, she bursts out crying, and if I do, she gives me a second helping. <laughs> you really are between the deviled kidneys and the deep blue still, aren't you? Hey. What if I tell Mary you aren't getting proper meals and I offer to bring some of her stuff over to you, we could chuck it away and I could cook us a decent meal. Isn't it marvellous how marriage turns an innocent idiot into a Machiavellian moral? <laughs> Is that all right, then? I'll, I'll think about it. In the meantime, go and start some work, otherwise we'll all starve. Having a short rest to give you enough strength to get you through your tea break? Uh, uh, I, I was doing some uh, trade union research. Oh, yes, yes, very good, yes. I'll award you both ears and a tail. <laughs> what for? Coming out with a right load of bull like that. <laughs> no, seriously, Gaffer, I, I was listening to a, a, a very intensive discussion about how the Japanese are flooding our country with TVs and cars and motorbikes, and they are doing union members out of their jobs. Something should be done about that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, of course, you heard all this on your Hakasaki stereo. That's right. <laughs> well, you're not surprised, surely. You lot have been asking for trouble for years. Let's face it, it takes, it takes 100 men in this country to make one flaming car. One to put the bits and pieces together, the other 99 to distract the attention of the management. <laughs> Mind you, I'm, I'm glad you brought up about the Japanese workers. 
It's not, it's not a bad idea, that. I think we might give it a try. Just inform the lads we're, we're going over to the Japanese system. If they don't like it, they can suck a yak it and see. <laughs> Just you wait a minute. We will have to have proper consultations. I, I will have to convene a branch meeting. All right, Danny. But come in office when, lady? <laughs> Oh, oh, why the hell do I do that with a big kid? <laughs> what, do you, what do you put in this stuff? Nothing that I shouldn't. It must be the fluoride. Tastes more like the floor cloth. <laughs> hey, Gaffer. I've got a proposition for you regarding this Japanese deal. I shall have to get my brain syringed out. I could have sworn he said Japanese. Charlie, Harry and me are coming in to discuss it. Mind you, Harry's dead against it. He's demanding concessions first. Yeah, well, that's Harry, isn't it? Give him an inch, he thinks he's a ruler. And Charlie, <laughs> he doesn't know which day of the week Wednesday is, which uh, leaves me. Yes, which tells me that at any minute now, something's going to leave me. But I'm not after a bribe or anything, just a small favour. All right, Ginger, come on. What is the favour of the month? Well, you've got this house with nobody in it, and I've got this dolly bird with nothing but yellow lines everywhere. So in exchange for a bit of bread and breakfast with after breakfast, you get my vote. All right, Ginger, you're on. Mind you, you'll still have to fix Charlie. Oh, don't worry about him. He's like the local brew, isn't he? Wet, weak, and not much of a head on. <laughs> your wife's not going to be very pleased when she finds out that you're keeping a disorderly spare room while she's away. She's hardly like to hear about it in Australia, is she, Betty, dear? When's she coming back, anyway? She's been gone ages. No, yeah, I don't know. She's in the 14th heaven over there. Especially now she's having to make all the wedding arrangements. What wedding? Oh, didn't I tell you? My lad Spencer's being joined in holy padlock to his Australian girlfriend. <laughs> Mind you, I don't know what the hell's the matter with her. All those sun bronze giant to pick from as she chooses him. It must be something he does with his didgeridoo. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Britain, <laughs> we are the deputation come to discuss this latest crazy notion of yours. Right, lads? No. <coughs> Hassan! <laughs> <laughs> but you was it that said nobody's perfect, they were wrong. There's three perfect idiots here for a start. <laughs> the Japanese start all negotiations with a tea ceremony, so, Betty, three of your finest infusions. Three of my what? Harry, uh, Betty's hardly your kosher geisha, is she? <laughs> but, I mean, if you insist, Betty, go and make three teas without. I only hope this lot know the Japanese for yuck. <laughs> all right, well, get sat down in the boardroom. Nobody's finding me on my knees before closing time. Was that without milk or without sugar? Without liability under the Workers' Compensation Act. <laughs> and so, gentlemen, it's not going to be easy catching up with the Japanese. I mean, let's face it, they had colour televisions before we had black and white rainbows. <laughs> I, think, I think we can do it, and I think it's the duty of us here at Moffat Engineering to help get this great country back on the rails. We can only hope there's not an intercity coming the other way. <laughs> this firm could go down in history, eh, Gaffer? This firm could go down a lot quicker than that, Joe. Oh, I just never mind the comics, Gaffer. What exactly does this scheme involve? Well, it involves us copying the Japanese methods. I mean, all of us one equal team, working for the good of the company, starting the day with a happy heart. Oh, but what about your side of the bargain? When do we get better working conditions? Do you realise it's so cold in that workshop there are times I can't even feel my hackles rise? <laughs> the good Lord didn't insulate you properly. Don't blame me. I mean, that air on your chest was supposed to be his attempt at thermal underwear. I might have known you'd be like this. OK, brothers, hands up all those who are ready to sink this Japanese junk now. Carried unanimously. Hey, wait, wait. wait a minute, Harry. I've heard a shop steward squint, but this is ridiculous. You're the only unanimous one among the three of you. And I think we should give it a try. Ah, uh, because, because you've been got at. How about you, Brother Hotchkiss? Oh, uh, Charlie, I was, I was thinking we ought to have a discussion, you know, about that problem you were talking about this morning. I was, uh, a bit I'm, I'm interrupting. Why don't you answer Harry's question? Oh, uh, I suppose we could try it for a bit. There you are, you see, Harry. That's twice as unanimous as you. All right, all right. We'll give it a go for 24 hours, but you try and wriggle out of one single thing and it's all off. Don't you want your tea? It's with the compliments of Little Lotus Blossom. Oh, <laughs> I have heard the Harry Carry, but that's something Harry Canny Carry. What's 
all this pseudo Mikado stuff about? It's about to get that lot at it. I think I'll uh, I'll arrange uh, one of those Japanese productivity meetings this afternoon. That's where they all sit around, you know, and they criticize each other's work and attitude and say where they think the others are letting the side down. Can you imagine? That lot will be at each other's throats like rabid gerbils in seconds. Have to be fun! Have to be fun! Have to be fun! All right, all right, Harry. Well, thank you. Do you mind? Don't tell me you put your brain in for its thousand mile service again. <laughs> oh no, it's time for Japanese jerks, gaffer. Everybody out in the yard for press ups and jogging. Press ups? You must be joking. It takes everything I've got all its time just to hang down. Now <laughs> uh, listen. If the management are not outside in the yard with the workers within five minutes, the entire scheme's off. Have two, three, four. Have two, three, four. Have two, three, four. Have two, three, four. Oh well, I suppose I better show women. I only hope that Mother Earth can stand the strain. But I just thought I'd let you know, if you want me, I'll be at the house, all right? I, uh, no, I think I coloured me cow towel when I was trying to make both ends meet this morning. <laughs> oh, not really. I'm just massaging the inside of my muscles with some 12-year-old Caledonian internal body rub. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I'll probably be in later, love, but uh, hang on a minute. There's somebody at the door. Ginger. <laughs> ginger. Excuse me a minute, love. Uh, Bet, still there? Uh, is, uh, is Ginger there? Well, uh, see, see if you can find him, love, and get straight back to me quickly. I'm, I'm sorry, love. I think there's uh, I think it's been a bit of a misunderstanding. Oh, no. Ginger came round a little while ago and said he found this place to stay. Yes, for one night, love. I mean, I've known Marks and Sparks out in new branches with less stuff than you've got there. Well, I'm fed up with me, Mum and Dad, so I've moved out. Maybe, but you're not moving in. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, love. I, I mean, eight hours of what you had in mind is about what I had in mind. I hope I've got a new packet of ding-dongs or that bell will wear out. Bring your bags through here, love. Put them, put them in this bedroom. Is it all right if I have a bath? Yeah, I suppose so, if you must. Uh, yes? Where are these, Mum and Dad? Eileen? Oh, well, fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I, 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 you, you don't know where she is at the moment, I suppose. Well, of course we know where she is. Anyway, we thought we should call round and see you. Yes, but I'm afraid there's a bit of a misunderstanding, you see. And I, I, I assure you, I, I don't want to be involved in any plans that your daughter may have made. Well, that's nice. Isn't it, Norm? Yeah, sure. Nice. Yes, well, I, 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 I may add that I thoroughly disapprove as well of, of what those two young people intend to do. Disapprove? You hear that, Norm? That's nice, isn't it? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Nice that. Well, whether you disapprove or not, those two are going to get married. Married? You don't want to take any notice of what that lecherous young devil tells you. Well, really. If this is Doris Moffat's idea of a welcome, it isn't mine. We're going, Norm. Just a minute, just a minute. Look, what's all this got to do with my missus? Well, she wrote you that we were coming over, didn't she? Well, not that I know to. What, what did she send it by? Second class boomerang? <laughs> no, wait a minute. Australia, of course. Don't mean you two aren't... Cheryl and Norm, your lad Spencer's future in-laws. Doris insisted we stay here for a few days while we were over here. Yeah, yeah, of course. Why didn't you say, come on in and make yourself oh. comfortable? I'm sorry about that, uh, Cheryl. Oh. Norm? Oh, well, that's more like it. Who do you think we were, then? 
Yeah, well, for a minute, I'm... Oh, well, for... <laughs> Go and fetch our gear in, Norm. <laughs> oh, sorry. Didn't know you had visitors. <laughs> <laughs> we have some funny people in to read the gas meters these days. <laughs> I, and, uh, I, and I don't want you to start jumping to confusions. What's all this? Reckon it's a girl, Cheryl. <laughs> it's not difficult to see it's a girl. It's not difficult to see one or two other things as well. Man and his own, wife away, open whiskey bottle, middle of the afternoon. Oh, yes, I can put two and two together. Then half of it comes to 11. <laughs> I, I don't suppose it's any good telling you that I'm just looking after her for a friend. Well, I'll soon sort this out. She's going to get a piece of my mind. Oh. Come out of here, you young trollop! No, I want Ginger. Looks like you've committed the only crime for which you get punished, Fred, being found out. Come out here! I'm not coming out till you get me Ginger. Uh, uh, Cheryl, I can assure you, there's a very simple explanation to all this lot. Which is? Which is why I've got to dash off for a few minutes. Well, why don't you just go in the lounge, though? Just, just sit down, make yourself a couple, have a, have a... I'll be back with a complete answer. I have to drag him here by his flaming red head. There you are. Did you, did you locate Ginger yet? No, that's why I was trying to ring you. Ginger was last seen one hot breath ahead of an irate father. He's probably gone to ground for a week. Uh, bang goes my alibi. And to think that today was tomorrow I was looking forward to yesterday. <laughs> Do I smell trouble? Uh, no, love. No. Ginger's birds just turned up, up at my place with a pantechnical full of female frippery and started climbing out of her clothes. I don't, I don't know where Ginger finds them, but I wish I could borrow his map. <laughs> I, I'm not sure whether you're complaining or not. I didn't have time to find out before Cheryl and Norm arrived. Hot foot from Kangaroo County. Sure, no. Yeah, my lad Spencer's future in-laws from Australia. She's got a voice like a lovesick loud ailer. She starts calling my missus and telling her Doris will be beside herself. Well, she would be if there were room. <laughs> now, Charlie. Hey, why aren't you working? And what, what are you doing in your best beer spilling suit? Uh, that's what I was getting round to. Nobody is working. You mean officially? Well, when you didn't come back after lunch, Harry said it was, everyone was treated the same now, and we could go home as well. So, it's not exactly your day, is it? Well, the rest of it's like the first bit. I don't particularly want it. Only I called back to ask if I could come round early tonight to, to start cooking that meal like we agreed. Yeah, I'm sorry, Charlie. I, I, I can't be bothered with all that. I've got too much trouble on my mind with Ginger. I've... I've... Hey, hey, Ginger. Just a minute. L listen. Do you, do you know how to bake a ginger cake? A what? I think I might be able to pull off a coup de ghetto. Listen. <laughs> Get all the ingredients for a ginger cake and come around to my house in about 15 minutes. All right, Gaffer, I think I can do that. Mind you, it's been a long time since I made a ginger cake. Don't bother about that. Don't you buy it. Go on. Uh, one small phone call to Charlie's missus and I'll be on my way back. Are you going to face the music? Face the music? I'm going to conduct the orchestra. <laughs> Hello, Mary. Well, I'm afraid that's the story in a nutshell, Norm. You say this bluey joker parked a sheila on you, went walkabout? Yes, I probably did. <laughs> well, Fred, you lie so well, I believe you. I'd like to help. I sure won't buy it. She spent too many sleepless nights listening to the loose floorboard on the landing when your lad was staying with us. She reckon like father, like son? Yeah, well, it doesn't surprise me. I was the sort of kid my mother didn't want me to play uh. with. Pull <laughs> the bedroom curtain so I can't see in. Oh, so you've come back. Well, you might as well know that I've been trying to ring Doris, only there's a delay. And, uh, how's the, uh, how's the patient? If you mean that young... What do you mean, patient? Still, still screaming and yelling for ginger, is she? That's all she'll say. Uh, sad case, you know, really. Acute anorexia gingivitis. Come again? <laughs> so, ground ginger, she sniffs it all the time. Sniffs it? Yes, it's one of the kicks all the youngsters are on in England at the moment. Powdered ginger, straight up the ute. <laughs> and of course, the after effects leave them with a, a, a terrible itch of the skin, which makes them want to rip off their clothes just to get a bit of relief, you know, which unfortunately you saw her doing. Oh, yeah, I saw her, all right, but I've never heard of such a thing. No, well, it's probably been held up from getting down under. Well, that'll be Charlie. Would you go and let him in, Norm? Yeah, all right then, Fred. Uh, you know, this, uh, 
This Charlie lad, you know, he's, he's a young lad who's trying to wean her off it, you know, gradually. He's what, what we call Spiceaholics Anonymous. He's <laughs> sort of a man for all seasonings, you know. But what's she doing here? Well, her parents threw her out, and of course, Charlie asked me to take her in. Well, just don't count on taking me in, that's all. Uh, uh, Charlie, have you uh, got the stuff? Have you got the, uh, the ginger? Yes, Gaffer, here it is. Oh, uh, no fly. Uh, yes, uh, just what we wanted, lovely, lovely. Uh, tell me, do you do this a lot? Oh, quite often, but they aren't all ginger ones, of course. Uh, so I gathered. <laughs> and uh, how long does it take to dry them out? Well, when I've finished, I usually stick them on the windowsill to cool off. <laughs> Charlie, can we uh, come to a little girl? We've got ginger for you, love. Yeah, in you go. Right, 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 love. This is not going to be a pretty sight, love. I want ginger! I want ginger! See, these young girls, they're all the same. You see, they can't leave ginger alone. Well, I'd never have believed it. That poor girl. Fred, I think I've misjudged you. So have I, Fred. <laughs> yes, well, you weren't to know, love. Don't worry about it. Look, why, why don't you go and make us a nice cup of tea straight in the kitchen, very slowly. All right, love, don't worry, I'll answer the door. I didn't hear the bell. Don't you worry, it will. <laughs> Quicker than I thought it would as well. Hello, Mary. All right, where's Charlie? Where is he? Hey, I'm not Ginger, I'm Charlie. Whoa. Hello. It's true. Who was that? She went through here like an Australian fast bowler through a pack of ponds. Watch it, sport. That happens to be Charlie's Mrs. Mary. So, this is what you've been getting up to behind my back. Yeah, that's it, isn't it, lovely? Confucius, he say, woman with sharp tongue never gets employed. What? I'm getting out of this madhouse and I'll send for Miss Stuff. What's going on, Fred? Ah, it's better you shouldn't know, Norm. It would make your hair stand on end. Get in there. Thank you very much. Not at all, Mary. Right, Charlie Hotchkiss. What's your lying excuse for all this? Well, I just brought this. I can't tell you. Of course you can't. It speaks for itself, doesn't it? I'm surprised it gets a turn. Right? Why isn't he at work? Oh, he just walked out, love, with the rest. Well, don't worry. From now on, I'll see he keeps his nose to the grindstone. That's the idea, and I'll make sure he gets plenty of overtime. Keep him out of mischief, eh? Right. Perhaps he'll be too tired for larks like this, then. <laughs> uh, uh, Charlie, uh, you might as well take that food you brought from home. The girl's gone without it. What's that? That's some of my upside-down cake. You've been bringing it for that woman. After you slaved over a hot stove, eh, love? Yes, I slaved over a hot stove to make that. He doesn't deserve it, you know. I'd make him do all his own cooking in the future. You hear that? From now on, you do all your own cooking. Now, come on. Thanks, Gaffer. <laughs> Thank the Lord I haven't got a conscience. You know something, Fred? You got rid of that Sheila, you got the quiet and show, and you got this poor jockey Charlie working overtime. Yes, and I saved him from his wife's diabolical cooking. You should have seen that upside-down cake. He came out the right way up. <laughs> I think you're a bit of a genius, Fred. Have a tube. Very kind of you. Mind you, I did have one bad moment. What was that, Fred? Well, lucky your missus never noticed, but Charlie only brought bottled ginger in syrup. <laughs> <laughs>